Hello and welcome to the Misty Cast. I'm your host, Toby Mobius. And I'm Justin Thorne. The third or fourth episode in a row where this has happened. I apologize for the downtime. We did not get an episode out last month. This is because I was busy with a convention, sickness from the convention, and life in general. So hopefully this month I will get out three episodes of the Misty Cast. Uh, because it is the season for the kind of schlock that's on the show. Mm-hmm. Speaking of schlock... Um, yeah, we have so a very special guest. Yes, a uh, very special guest. Uh, recently joined uh, that guy with the glasses dot com, but you probably know him from his show uh, Blood Splattered Cinema. It is the horror guru. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. Yes. 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 The yes. guru of the horrors. That is me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, we wanted Halloween y. Sorry. No, no. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, Halloween y? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, I, I, I oh, do a well, terrible at Halloween least I impression. tried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get Phelan on the show at some point. We, we've had Lupa, but I need to get Phelan at some point, but I don't oh, know if we watch Mystery Science Theater. Hmm. That's a good question. I'll yeah, ask. I don't know if he's into MS, if he's a MST3K fan or not. Like, I know uh, last when we had Allison, she said he was vaguely familiar with it, but that was like two years ago. Yeah. So hopefully he's seen more of it by now. I mean, he lives with Allison. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure. He's, yeah, um, maybe she's probably got him to watch maybe some episodes. But... I'm sure she's shanghaied him into a marathon at least once. Yeah, most likely educated the hell out of him. <laughs> yes. Mystery, what do you so, mean you don't know what Mystery Science Theater 3000 is? <laughs> <laughs> Mystery <laughs> science occasion. <laughs> that sounds like a failist joke about the show. <laughs> <laughs> Using my Mystery science occasion. <laughs> kind of does, yeah. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> Mystery <laughs> Science whatever 3000. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I... Uh, I'm part of a Tigwatig fanfic podcast, and I'm usually the one to play Phelan. So nice. Well, that explains a lot. It's usually Phelan or Brad. I don't know why. <laughs> and Film Brain, and I do the worst. Fi- I do the worst Matty Buck impression, which is weird because <laughs> everyone has a, a Matty Buck impression. I can't do a very good one. I I do not have one at all. I I, I could try, and it would just be a failure because I can't even do a British accent well. So no, I, I wouldn't even try. Yeah, well, I, according to Smarty, it's do a falsetto with a British accent, and that's a film brain impression. I can see that, yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> but nostalgia critic! <laughs> You're right, that is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it is really bad. <laughs> it's bad, but uh, my other one is not falsetto, but it's me moving my head very rapidly, so it messes up the mic. Hello, and welcome <laughs> to Bad Movie Beatdown! Yeah. That one is a lot closer. That's a lot closer. A little better. Hi, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> sorry matt no hard feelings yeah sorry matt thanks for coming into my chair room that one time anyway on to the topic at hand that i keep getting distracted from mystery science <laughs> theater mm-hmm. and going back into the indoctrination of a fan uh how did you get into mystery science theater it was actually a friend of mine back in like middle school was really into it. And he was the kind of guy like when he was into something, he had to get everyone that was around him into it. Um, so like he, he would invite me over when like sci fi would do one of its mystery science theater marathons occasionally. And we just sit down and we'd watch a bunch of those in a row. And hey, that's that's that was my introduction. That's one of the best ways to get into it is is knowing someone who's really into it, and they want you to get into it, too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Uh, that happened with me, but he didn't He didn't really show it to me himself. I just mm-hmm. knew he was into it. It's like, oh, I wonder what this is about. So uh, I watched Manos. Nice, yeah, of course. <laughs> and then I took a week to recover. <laughs> but, uh, when I came back, I was hooked. <laughs> uh, One of the earliest ones I remember is, what, what is, I think, Merlin's Shop of Magical Wonders. I, I believe uh, that was... That's, yeah, One that's, of the earliest ones I remember. Well, yeah, that's that's, that's season ten. That's that's, that's uh, actually, yeah, that was the last episode ish. Mm-hmm. Actually, actually, yeah, that was the last one that actually aired because they they aired them out of order because of a license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they didn't 
I think it was a light um, a rights issue, and they didn't air it until after the, the finale, Diabolique. <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, why are they, why are they back in space? Why why is she? I'm what? <laughs> Basically. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, mine was a little. I the first one I ever saw was uh, Ega. I was flipping through channels while I was visiting my aunt and uncle, and it's like kind of Comic Central, and I was like. This is kind of interesting. Why the, I was like, it's a cheesy movie. Why, why are these guys like making jokes? And it wasn't until like a few years later that I was in college and I met one of my best friends. Uh, in the, uh, he was a big fan of the show and it was on Sci Fi at the time. So I was kind of like, he, he got me to watch Manos. And after watching Manos, I was like, nice. Yeah. Excellent. <clears throat> All comes back to Manos. It usually does. Yeah, like it does. that's there's a reason that's one of the more, you know, commonly referred to episodes. Mm-hmm. It's so weird that they're making a movie of the room when really someone should make a movie of the story of Manos. I would so watch the hell out of that. That's that sounds that, that would, would be amazing. A, yeah, the the making of like a you know, a, a fictionalized making of Manos would be a, a quite an interesting tale. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I w- I would really really dig that. Uh, someone did a mock poster for one uh, online at some point, and they cast, like, Zach Galifianakis as Torgo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can kind of see I that, see but him. that... I can yeah, see go him ahead. doing Torgo. I can see him doing Torgo. It it, it'd, uh, it'd be a good reason for him to do a dramatic role for once. I think yeah, that'd be pretty yeah. cool. Because he can't act, he just doesn't have to. Yes, yes. He's been typecast in a particular type of role, which is what we usually see him in. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of sad. Yeah. It is kind of sad, but at least it's work, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, work's work. Yeah. But uh, going into the uh, sci-fi thing, uh, mm-hmm. going back and watching older episodes, do you prefer the Comedy Central or the Sci-Fi Channel uh, era of shows? Ooh, that's a tough call. Yes. Um, you know, I, th- I, th- I actually think like the, the the early early you know sci-fi. Ch- uh, God damn it! I, I'm now spacing on which one's the early one. Um, the first few years of that damn show, I think are the best. Yes, the Comedy Central ones. Unfortunately, me and MST three K history, I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> eh. It's a long convoluted history of yeah. channel swaps mm-hmm. and toast changes. Yeah. <laughs> so are All you I know is you're, um, you're saying you more, more lean more toward Joel than Mike kind of episode. Yeah, right? yeah, generally. Okay. You know, okay, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, everyone's got their their preferences and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like I prefer Joel, but I noticed more of my favorite episodes are Mike ones. Mm. And I I think it's just because towards the end of the show, the writing uh, was a little bit stronger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, they, yeah, they just I kept getting lean... better. Myself, I lean a little more toward Mike, but there's plenty of Joel episodes that are, I like absolutely adore. So it's like I love Joel very much. It, it's like I got to meet him once. It's like when he was a, he was here and he came to Rochester and do his ripping myself. So I got to meet him in person. It was one of the best things that ever happened to me. <laughs> he was that's so, pretty awesome. Oh yeah, he's he's a wonderful in person. So very nice. I talked to Trace on Twitter once. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> That's further than I've ever got. I don't mm-hmm. think I've met any of them. Yeah, he, he autographed my copy of one of uh, actually his one of his favorite episodes. Uh, I think it's it's still his still his like absolute favorite. Is, uh, I accused my parents for season five. So. Yeah, he loves that one. Yeah, so nice. I got him to autograph my copy of it. So I thought that was like perfect because everyone was like bringing like Manos. I wanted to have, be like eh, everyone's gonna be have Manos. Everyone's gonna have Manos. So I wanted to be different. Pod people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, as an aside, for those of you who don't know, uh, if you check Joel's Twitter feed, he'll often talk about Mystery Science Theater episodes as he's like rewatching them. Yeah, so. he's been rewatching a lot. Oh. Of, he even rewatches. He doesn't rewatch his own episodes. He's been rewatching a lot of Mike ones too. And, and you know, it's like he, that's pretty cool. Yeah, he, maybe he, it's it's research he, for Turkey Day 2014. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he he likes a lot of the Mike ones too. So it's like you know it's. It, show, it shows that, you know, people would think that, you know, there's no real grudge. You know, it's like, it's quite well mm-hmm. some people make that. You know, yeah, so. some people think there's an animosity. There's there's no animosity between these guys. No. That's that's good to hear. That's good to hear. That's very nice. It's it's mm-hmm. rare for a show that lasts, you know, that long 
and there's no animosity between the cast members. Like it's almost yeah, yeah. unheard of. Especially like like old hosts and and new hosts and stuff like that. Like it's it's good to hear that there's no bad blood. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because besides, because it was it wasn't because like Mike made him leave. It's like it was it was just originally him and Jim Allen, so why he decided to leave the show. The mm-hmm. it's like and he he perfect he he basically like endorsed you know Mike taking over for him. He felt that he was the right choice. So you know, rock on. He's been with so, the show since season, almost the uh, since season two, I think is when Mike came. Yes, yeah, so yeah, he came in during season two when um. Josh departed. Mm-hmm. Mm. And because he was, you know, became like head writer like really quickly, so it's like uh, who else but Mike Nelson? Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're the best. <laughs> Toby, do you remember which episode Mike first appeared as a character? On um, I think it was um, Jungle Goddess. Yes. yes. Where where he and uh, he and Jim are the explorers. Yes, yes, that's it. Also, no. a rare appearance of Jim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you really, really Not... saw him play like a character outside of Gypsy. Back yeah, I think it's just because he was most comfortable with Gypsy, because you could tell he got really comfortable with that character, uh, you know, before he passed it to Patrick. Mm-hmm. Which is an amazing feat, considering that puppet must weigh a ton. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Gypsy had a big head. I don't know how we can do that voice and heft that puppet, because the voice is easy. <laughs> yeah. A lot of practice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> To get that false, that kind of like false, false settle voice kind of thing, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> you got to practice that. Richard Basehart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gypsy. So, if, and uh, if you haven't heard it, I recommend the uh, interview he did. I can't remember who with. Um, I think it was for the DVD shelf. I can't remember, but uh, it's on CastleForester dot com, mm-hmm. and you can listen to it. And there's a part where he's talking about when he, as Gypsy, using the puppet, did the traffic report for a news station. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's hilarious. <laughs> well, a wreck happened here, so if you want to see that. <laughs> it's really funny. Nice. Jim, Jim is, is, is a funny guy. Yeah. Have you used, like, the internet to watch, like, a lot of episodes, or do you, like, only the DVDs and stuff? Or? Yeah. We've discussed hosts. Yeah. Who would you mm. say is your favorite of the bots? Oh, ooh, mm. yes, ooh, hmm, let's see, of the bots, damn, of course I'm going to space out on their names, the, 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 I, I, I always really loved the one that, 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 um, God, he, he kind of looked like, like a, like a, like a candy dispenser, like his head was a bowl, Tom Servo, yeah, good. yeah, I always loved that guy, <laughs> Everyone loves a Tom Servo. <laughs> hey, hey, it's it's I, I I'm I love Mystery Science Theater uh, three thousand, but I'm not like one of those super knowledgeable people about it. I just watched yeah. it watched it with like like uh uh whenever it was on or whatever. But I didn't Do you really even like... know the name of the episode where Tom Servo dressed up as <laughs> <laughs> like stuff like that. I I don't know. And when it comes to names of characters, I, I I'm bad with names of characters in general. Like, even on episodes of my own show, like, I have to force myself to memorize character names because I always remember it as, like, oh, the black guy or, or the blonde one or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not the wrong I'm... It's like, you know, it's like we're not, like, big comic book guy level kind of nerds when it comes to the show. You know? We're not going to... You can remember Tom Servo, worst interview no, ever. ever. <laughs> what an asshole! <laughs> Apparently that's my job on the show. I'm the impression guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're worse jobs to have. You know? Yeah. I mean, you could you could be the shoves things up your butt guy. That... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> could be a lot worse. Yeah. I guess, uh, that just means I have Mike's job because he was the impression. <laughs> guy. Yeah, he was. Yeah. From yeah, there you go. Uh, Counting Crows to Captain Janeway, <laughs> for some reason. Morrissey, okay. Torgo, Captain Janeway. Uh, the list is long. <laughs> I I'm three seasons into Voyager, and his Janeway impression is hilarious to me now. Oh yeah, I've been rewatching Voyager myself again recently, and I have to agree. <laughs> uh, I, how do you do that? How do you rewatch Voyager? It's so bad. I'm watching Voyager for the first time, and oh okay. <laughs> I, uh, I'm I miss I'm I miss I'm Cass. 
I'm I'm, I'm doing select rewatching. I skipped most of the first three seasons, and I'm selectively picking episodes after seven or nine. Years. Oh yeah, there's a there's a really great uh, blog I found run by Anthony from Hey Ash, What's Playing called Skippable, where you mm. can look up a show and see which episodes you can just skip that aren't important to the story. Well, and in Voyager, there's a lot. Yes, that's kind of brilliant. That's a brilliant idea for a blog. Yeah, yeah I like uh, I barely touched any of the first three seasons. I just pretty much skipped right to like the end of season three. And the, wish I'd have known about that. I could have skipped so much Neelix. Oh God, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Just, just keep watching for the doctor, Toby. That's why keep I watching love, for the doctor. That's why I love how SF Debris refers to him as the shithead. He's, he's such a Shut douche. up, Chakotay. Just go back to the doctor. <laughs> oh, SF Debris, another new channel awesome pickup. I yeah. need to get him on the show because he is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's also MST3 fan. Oh, he's yeah. probably far more knowledgeable than I am. He'll be less of an idiot than I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I really love his work. He's, he's awesome. He's great. Yeah, yeah. He's a really good dude. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if you have a favorite host, favorite bot, uh, who would you say is your favorite of the Mads? Hmm. Yeah, do you really I have it? no idea. <laughs> um, Plus, you don't have preferences, fine. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, well, I don't, you have Doctor Forrester, Frank I, Pearl, and those other guys. I mean, I don't really like, don't really have a preference. Yeah. Yeah, because like a lot of fans seem to most lean toward more for Doctor Forrester, Kiwi's Frank. Uh, mm. Time period, but you know, there's plenty of people who like Carl. You know, there's nothing wrong with like Carl either. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you know, Bobo and Brain Guy are go- fun, goofy, you know, sidekick uh, mm-hmm. was Since I, that was the era where I was heavily watching the show, because I didn't watch much of the Joel era until uh, only watched a little bit on video at that time because mm-hmm. of with VHS. But it was more in the last like. Six years that I've really watched, rewatched a good chunk of Joel's time in the show before the sci-fi era, so uh, I I I like that that those guys I like that era. You know, it's like nice. I don't, I don't have a preference. It's like they're all they all they each have their own characters and they wear a different kind of humor. You know, it's like Pearl's it's just, all good. Yeah, Pearl was just more goofy, whereas Doctor Forrester he was he was trying to be evil. But he was also goofy. It's like where TV Strength was more of the the uh, the funny guy. Mm-hmm. Although, although I'm not saying that Doctor Forrester was had funny moments. It's just like it seemed like more of the jokes were either at from Frank or at Frank's expense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Forrester was usually the uh, the straight man to mm-hmm. Frank. Yeah, Frank was more of his butt monkey. And then it kind of switched when Pearl showed up. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. Very divisive among the fan base. Mm-hmm. I think they just wanted her Pearl to be different. They didn't want her to try to imitate her, her son, Dr. Forrester. So I think yeah, but ha- having two of them would have gotten really boring. Yeah, exactly. So it's Let's like, well, fit. where can we go with this? <laughs> it was weird seeing Let's them. Be... Th- it's weird seeing them interact in the, se- in, the, in, the, in, the, in the season seven episodes. You know, it's like where it's just two of them. You know, yeah. Because like, she was very... She really evolved. She was very that pearl is a lot different than the pearl you see in, in season in the next season, season eight when you went to sci fi. <laughs> like... Alright. Uh you were gonna say something, Josh? Oh, I was gonna say, let's be fair, what isn't divisive among the MST three K uh, fan base? <laughs> yeah. The, the... You like Joel's <laughs> new jumpsuit? Yeah. Charlatan. Yeah. <laughs> Blasphemy. It's <laughs> Yeah, it, even back in the day when the show was on, you know, just just uh, saying, like, you know, like, if you like Joel, you think Joel was better than Mike, or Mike was better than Joel, that caused, like, play wars. On, on it was a banned internet. topic. <laughs> yeah, the it, internet it, equivalent of a fist fight. Yeah, it is pretty much. It, 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 it would get ugly. It's, uh, it, it's kind of mellowed out now. It's not like that anymore. But now it's been some replaced people can by... still get... Yeah. You know, now it's been replaced by Doctor Who 10, 11, or 12. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That is where the new flame wars among the uh, science fiction fan bases. Well, that Love and that. Uh, new Trek versus old Trek. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, they, so. that, but that that's will a debate never go all away. Time. <laughs> well, there, as long as they keep making new iterations of Trek, that will keep going. There's still debate about whether or not Deep Space Nine was, was good or, or, or a complete blasphemy of Roddenberry's vision of what Trek was supposed to be. 
Yeah. I said, yeah, and what's your point? It was still amazing. Yeah, I <laughs> I love Deep Space Nine, and I will defend it anytime. Also, Gene the world Roddenberry would have Space Nine it. and Babylon Five. Gene Roddenberry would have hated Deep Space Nine, and, but he also hated Rathacon, like, so... Yeah, I like both shows. I'm a huge D5 fan, and I have, like, all five seasons on DVD, uh, but it's mm-hmm. like, I don't I don't try to pick one over the other. Uh, I'm kind of like... I try to stay that's, control that one. <laughs> that's the next thing I'm going to watch uh, when I finish Star Trek is B5 and uh, Blake 7. You nice. Have, yeah, you can definitely B5, B7. And I'm debating on if I want to watch Battlestar Galactica. Are you talking I, about... Uh, I know ahead of time the the finale of the reboot is disappointing, so yeah. it's going to yes. take a lot of the sting yes. away. If you but I'm told the rest of the show is pretty good. Yeah, the, the rest of the show gets pretty good. The last season is where it really started to go off the rails a bit. And the I kind of want to get into Stargate, but the lore seems really, really thick and impenetrable. Yeah, you you really got to rewatch Stargate from the beginning, and it, it, it's... It's one of the longest running sci-fi shows ever. There's ten seasons, yeah. and with it's it's the spin-offs. longest running consecutively. Two spin-offs too, as well. You know, it's like and a couple of uh, DVD movies. So there's a lot there. Yeah, it, it's not like it, not on the level of Star Trek, but it, it's it's a lot. Yeah, not the level of Doctor Who. Oh yeah, no, no, Doc- <laughs> Doctor <laughs> oh, Doctor Who. Few Trump's things all, are. You know, no, Doctor <laughs> Who with its sixty years of history trumps all. Yes. <laughs> uh, so much talk. Doctor Who's like comic books in that way, mm-hmm. basically. Except the at least comic books reboot every you know so often. Oh. True, true. But now it's a bit too often. Uh, well, speaking of reboots, true. have you heard about how Joel's trying to like bring back the show? That would be awesome. That'd be great. I'd, I'd be totally behind that. Yeah, he. Uh, it's it's still in the development. He he's been talking about it for the last like couple months this year. Uh, he's mentioned it a few times. He basically he wants to. Um, Crow and Tom Silver will be back, but it'd be a new host, new villain, you know, and mm-hmm. maybe probably no satellite. Probably no satellite, and he's he's working on getting like a lot of the former cast to like you know, you know, cameo every once in a while or something like that. But you know, he'd be like working like behind the scenes. He wouldn't be the host again. So it's well, like that's, he's, that's, so it's basically what he promised when he left in the first place. Mm-hmm. That. that that sounds fantastic. I mean, I mean, Rift Tracks has been working well for Mike over there, so oh, yeah. go ahead, do it. Yeah, yeah, and it, it would definitely pick up a hole because you know, Cinematic Titanic was a lot of fun, and, and you know, it's sad it was it went to an end, but you know, they that was their choice. You know, they they were it wasn't mm-hmm. going to be like indefinite. They they because I asked Joel about it when I met him, and be like he told us that they would always planned for Cinematic Titanic had a certain shelf life. They were only going to do mm. it for a certain amount of time before then they said, okay, you know what? And they wanted to be able to move on and do other things, so that's that's why they they, they put it to us. Plus, Makes they all sense. live in different parts of the country, so it was difficult to tour and get yeah. together for studio stuff. Exactly. So. Yeah. We're, like Mike, Kevin, and Bill, you know, it's like, it, it, even though Mike lives out in California and, and Kevin and Bill are still in, back in the Midwest, it's easier for them to get together and do stuff. You know, it's like, yeah. it's just the three of them. Plus, you know, when in doubt, they can just all do their studio stuff separately because mm-hmm. they're not on camera like Cinematic Titanic is. Yeah. Mm. And they're not trying to do too much else like some of the other cast members are doing. That's like, you know, like, you know, uh, Frank Conniff and, and, you know, Trace and Mary Jo, they've all been doing, and even Josh Weinstein, they're all doing all these other stuff, you know, it's like. Doing, like, books mm-hmm. and, and, you know, stuff like that. Whereas, like, you know, Mike, Kevin, and Bill are just pretty much, you know, the Rick Tracks, this is what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Which I think is Ke- fine I, by me. Riff Tracks is awesome. Yeah. I think Bill still writes, but I don't know if he's written anything in a while. No, I don't, think he, I don't think he has. I know uh, Kevin, you know, he he just re-released uh, Year at the Movies. Oh, yeah, that's right, he and did. I, nice. I, w- I would love V if he did another book, because I, I love Year at the Movies. It's seriously in one of my, uh, it's like my top ten books. Um, I still haven't had a chance, I don't have to read that sometimes, I've never gotten a chance to read you really should, because I would love to do an episode on it, because it's a fantastic book. I haven't read it either, but after that recommendation, I think I have to. <laughs> uh, you you really, especially the uh, the re-release uh, that just came out, you can get it on mm-hmm. Amazon for Kindle and such. Badass. Uh, my copy is a paperback that I got on eBay, and it's amazing. Sweet. Mm-hmm. There's a part where he watches Corky Romano with Mike in New York. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now that oh, sounds entertaining. They must and they, have, sneak, and they sneak in some Fosters. Yeah. I can only imagine the roofs they threw at the screen while they were watching that movie. They were too busy cringing in horror. Oh, really? Oh. Yes. 
And I'm watching the, the, the terrified dude bros who yes. thought this, they entered into a comedy I tried and said it was a nightmare. I tried watching that movie once when I was on TV and I just couldn't finish it. It was so bad. That's pretty rare. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it, 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 the movie's got to be really bad for me to even not want to bother watching it. It's like, you know, it's, that's enough. You can only, uh, only take so much. There's another great part where uh, he and his wife sneak Thanksgiving uh, dinner for five into a movie theater and eat it on a collapsible table while watching Monsters, Inc. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Nice. They, he, like, gets a giant coat and they sew pockets into it, and there's a giant roll-up t- a table and a uh, thing in the back. Mm-hmm. And they carve up the turkey... Uh, and put it into Tupperware and put it in the coat. Yeah, I was about to say. I was like, really they cool. Have, they must have carved up the turkey because there's no way you could hide the turkey that easy. <laughs> they had cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes, everything. That's that's awesome. It was really <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, I'll have to definitely have to get a copy of it at some point. It's, it's very good. So, um, hang on, I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, uh, speaking of riff tracks, since you mentioned that, do you have any favorites of those? Yeah. Of Recommend- those? Or, like, recommendations they give to the people. Um, the... They did one on Halloween that I really liked. I <laughs> like their Halloween riff tracks. Yeah. Um, Is that the um, night, uh, night, I think that was Night of the Living Dead, right? They did, on, they did that on Halloween, I think, around Halloween time last year. This year they're doing the Anaconda, which I cannot wait. That movie so deserves to be riff. <laughs> no, oh, no, man, I saw that movie. Th- yeah, I saw that movie in the theater, dude. It, it's bad. It deserves to be ripped. I, I'm so looking forward to that. Movie. I, actually, I, I meant the the actual like original John Carpenter's Halloween. They did a riff tracks on that. Yeah, oh, that, that, that okay. I, I really liked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I need to watch those now that I actually uh, own the first few Halloween movies on DVD. Oh um, yeah, definitely. So yeah, I got like a combo pack at uh, I think Best Buy. So I have them, so I should do that. Yeah. <laughs> I also feel kind of bad. I love riff tracks, but it also kind of requires you to have a copy of the movie that that, that they're riffing. Mm-hmm. So, like, some of the ones that I know have got to be good, I can't, like, watch. Like, I, I believe they did one on Twilight that I have not seen because I don't own a copy of Twilight. Yeah. Well, I, the good I, news I, is, <laughs> like, you know, at worst you can, like, try and find it on Netflix or you can rent yeah, it on yeah. YouTube, you know, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. If I get curious enough, I can do that. Yeah, it's like I, I I'm in the same boat. I, I I would like to listen to the Twilight riffs, but I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste my money buying copies. Of <laughs> well, see, that's that's the thing. Like with the bigger movies like Twilight or The Dark Knight, you can probably find someone you know that owns a copy. Uh, that's yeah, true. That's, yeah, true. that's true. Like my sister lent me her copy of Twilight. That's that's a very good point. Mm-hmm. That's why I like the the video on demand ones because you get yeah. the movie already and it's already got the track. Yeah, on. yeah. I got I got I've down, I've downloaded and burned a couple of those. <laughs> uh, I I only own a few uh, riff tracks. I own the ones for Harry Potter. Uh, uh, Harry I Potter heard those ones are good. I haven't I haven't I haven't the, listened. The to The one for Harry Potter two is hilarious. Nice. Uh, I own the one for High School Musical, which is amazing. Oh, nice. There's a part, uh, like, they, when they're singing the songs, they'll add their own lyrics, and it's hilarious. <laughs> I always oh, that like sounds that. glorious. Like, uh, they're doing uh, what I've been looking for, and it's like, short people got no reason. Short <laughs> people got no reason. You take the good, you take the bad, you take it all, and there you have the facts of life. <laughs> facts of life. <laughs> the best part about being a woman is the prerogative to have a little fun. London calling to a faraway town. <laughs> it's really great. That, that's, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Mm-hmm. It's it's <clears throat> really funny, and uh, the the riffs are all you know spot on. It's a, it's a great one, and it's it's a reason to buy High School Musical, which yeah. <laughs> is kind of a feat in itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a couple um, of good ones. I got like Sons of Hercules and ghost house oh the one i just watched with my friend was we finally uh watched uh, the cool as ice oh oh, oh my lord nice oh. that movie is horrible <laughs> i didn't I, I heard it was bad but actually watching it i was just like in awe i was like wow this is a really bad movie <laughs> just like i've seen doug's review i don't need to watch this film <laughs> i'm not i don't hate myself enough to do that 
it, it's it's one I would recommend. It's it's it, they 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 do a really good job of making fun of that 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 <laughs> the early '90s and vanilla. It's just it's just so bad. They also do a really good one on Highlander, which is which is which is worth getting. It's mm-hmm. it's very good. <laughs> uh, what's the other one I have? Uh, Batman and Robin, of course. Mm, yeah. I need to get Doug's one on uh, the Lion King, because I've heard that's good. Mm. Uh, him and uh, the Last Angry Geek, mm-hmm. who we've had on the show before, and he's awesome. Nice, nice. Seems like a really cool dude. Mm-hmm. He's a very cool dude. And I also own their live riff tracks of Plan 9 from Outer Space, which is amazing. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> the live shows have been very consistently good. Yeah, I uh, I need to get more of them. I have watched a couple online because uh, you can uh, some of them are on Hulu. Yeah, Tony totally mm-hmm. hasn't had much luck being able to go to the theater to see the live shows. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully I can do the next one because I have money now. <clears throat> yeah, as you're getting, actually getting paid. <laughs> hey, I have a there you go. Uh, and I I think I get paid before the uh, thing uh, for the event. Depends if I can just find a ride now. Um, oh, I have a good one. Um, do you, when it comes to the, the like the movies they ref, do you have like certain preferences of genres? You know, like like the horror, the sci-fi stuff, or you know, like the sword and sandal, you know, like Hercules stuff. Or, it, it doesn't really matter. Did, uh, I could watch anything they riff, really, but like as far as personal preference goes, I tend to lean on the horror stuff just because I'm I'm kind of that's kind of what I'm. That's kind of what you Kind do. of stuff I'm into. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I thought. I figured as much, but I figured I'd ask anyway. <laughs> You know, but like, hey, like, they want when they do like a sword and sandals thing. I'm not gonna like look away, like, oh, I'm not watching this episode if it happens to be on. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I I tend toward the goofy uh, science fiction stuff, like the like the true B movies of the nice. 50s and 60s. You know, uh, the yeah. brain that wouldn't die, uh, mm-hmm. teenagers from out of space, etc. Yeah, yeah, I can totally see that, and and those those aren't like. Like, The Brain That Wouldn't Die isn't completely out of the realm of horror. No, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was definitely, like, right, that, that walks, uh, it's like sci-fi slash horror, that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, or or, uh, the, or the, uh, the Crawling Hand. Crawling Hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. But, uh, I, uh, I mean, my, my two favorite episodes are... Werewolf and Soul Taker. <laughs> oh, Soul Taker, Soul man! Taker. Like uh, that's probably one of my one, that, that's one of my favorites too. I love Soul Taker, not just because I remember actually renting that movie on VHS oh, and being okay. like, "What the hell is this thing?" And then eventually <laughs> watching it later on MST3K and going like, "Oh my god, they actually made the movie watchable." <laughs> Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. <laughs> Get a glanchy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Soul Taker is a great one. Soul yeah. Taker is amazing. I need to watch that again. Because yeah, me too. It's been, a while. it's been a while since I watched that one. And that one's a great <laughs> one. It's not just because of the movie, but like you know, Mike and both uh, Joel and uh, TV Strength come back for that episode. So you can yeah, it's move. it's a fantastic little episode for it the uh, tenth season. It was a nice way to just kick off the final season by having Joel and, and Frank back for an, for an episode. Especially seeing Absolutely. Joel and Mike interact with the bots together on the satellite is really awesome. So, are yeah. you going to rescue us? I don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Joel. I mean, they even make fun of the whole Joel versus Mike, where like Joel's like, "Don't try to compare yourself to me, man. It's it's not worth it." <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's it's a it's a great episode. Uh, I'll probably end up watching that uh, either tonight or tomorrow once I uh, get up from work. One that I that I watched not too long ago for the first time that I really like is um, Tormented that it, where yeah. he's being haunted by his uh, his lo- lover that he let you know fall off the uh, what was it uh, lighthouse to yeah him, and, he, and he keeps seeing her ghost all over the place while he's trying to marry this other girl yeah mm-hmm. I, I really like that one I was like I was like this is this ain't a bad movie but they're riffing it really good <laughs> <laughs> I was like I'm not it's like I'm not too much on like those kind of ghost stories, but it was, I was like, I was kind of like, I was like, I was enjoying, I was having fun with the movie as much as the ripping, as them ripping on it. You know, it's, uh, it's mm-hmm. really surprised me. I was like, this one I really like. Yeah, I, uh, one I watched recently was I rewatched, uh, Santa Claus <laughs> just cause I, 
had time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like I, was, I was editing a video and I was like, ah, I'm gonna put something out. How about Santa Claus? Santa Just because it's it's something I can like not really pay attention to, but if I look at it, I you know I can laugh <laughs> at it. And uh, that movie just that one just gets better every time I watch it because oh, yeah. it that movie is stupid. It's, it's yes, the riffing is excellent. <laughs> it's, it is it is definitely like in Bizarro Land that 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 movie. Yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, like I don't remember San, I don't remember my mom telling me about how Santa was best friends with Merlin the magician and that he has uh, lapping mechanical reindeer and uh, he has a telescope that with a giant eye that he can and with and a giant talking lips that he can use to peer into my dreams. Um, yeah, it's kind of fights the devil. Yeah, and as then, he should. Darn that <laughs> devil! As 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 Joel as Mike uh, quote, famously quoted the episode, uh, "Good old fashioned nightmare fuel indeed." Because that movie <laughs> that, that that movie's loaded with it. <laughs> the French children stink to high heaven. Yeah, we're gonna wax Santa. He's moving on, and I see Easter Bunny's turn. <laughs> <laughs> and Satan scores. Uh just a great little episode. Yeah, um, all right, so uh, we are running down on our time. So, uh, okay. really quick, I want to know what are your favorite episodes of Mystery Science Theater? Well, you mentioned one of them earlier. I love the Soul Taker episode. Um, yes. out, outside of, outside of that, um, Gamera holds a special place in my heart for being what it. it that episode on Gamera actually introduced me to Gamera in general. Oh. Same and, here. And I'm now like a huge fan of Gamera as a result of that episode, so that will always hold a special place in my heart. He is um, really neat. Uh, yes, and he's full of turtle um, meat. <laughs> uh, Pod people also holds a special oh, place in my heart for yeah. having one of my favorite riffs ever. He died as he lived with his mouth wide open. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, that's that's one of my favorites too. Great Can I put episode. that on my tombstone? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hey, I'm on the milk carton. <laughs> Trumpy, so, so, you can do stupid things. <laughs> so those are probably my, my, my three favorite episodes. And of course I love like all like the, the fan favorites like, you know, uh Manos and Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. I love those episodes too, but those three definitely hold a place in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good list to have. <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> Uh, for the longest time, that was our theme song. Was uh, nice, uh, uh, idiot control. Now that <laughs> <Yeah>. is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of their fun uh, songs. Yeah, all yeah. their songs are generally fun songs. Yeah, those Gamera episodes are a lot of fun, and it's like I mm -hmm. wasn't familiar with Gamera being a Godzilla person, but it's like that. Those those are those are a lot of fun. It's like uh, absolutely. I think I, I can objectively say that the Gamera movies on MST are a lot better than the Godzilla ones. Just because Godzilla isn't in, like, half of the movie. Well, mm -hmm. they picked two of the worst Godzilla ones to do. Well, so. that's, I'm guessing that's, that's what they could afford. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that, that makes sense. They yeah, were early like, episodes. Yeah, because, like, Godzilla is, like, barely in Megalon or the Sea Monster. It's like, like yeah. half, it's like he doesn't show up in, like, so, like, either the half or, like, the like the last like quarter of the movie in both of them, so it's like. <laughs> but you know, they did pick one with Jet Jaguar. Yeah, the Jet Jaguar. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I, I, I recently rewatched that with some friends. Uh, so we, me and my other friend, we introduced someone else to the, the show. She likes bad movies, so she's like, she's got the MST game really easy. And it's like we were in like she was like in a like you know she likes Godzilla, so she's like, let's watch Godzilla vs. Megalon. I was like, oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's like and, here we go. Oh god, oh when yeah. She, the, when they did the skit at the end with the Jet Jaguar theme song, she was dying. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, because it's so funny. It's 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 so it's one of my favorite old segments. <laughs> it really is fantastic. Um, out of curiosity, have you seen any of the uh, the very early stuff? The uh, the low budget. Yeah, the KTMA, uh, borderline episodes. public access. I don't believe stuff. I have, uh, and if I have, I can't recall doing so. So I don't think I have. I recommend uh, doing so if you're in the right frame of mind to just mm -hmm. it's it's inter it's interesting to see where the show came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like going back that far, and you know, you have Trace as Crow and uh, J Josh Weinstein as Tom Servo and. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gypsy. riffing is much more slower paced because they weren't really running the riffs. They were basically doing like improving everything as they went along. Yeah. 
So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like the only things that were written were the host segments, pretty much, and even then, mm. those were very uh, heavily improvised, uh, from what I can oh. tell. It's, it's, it's like it's 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 yeah. The shows like the the key TV episodes are pretty rough. I mean, even rougher than like the season one episodes. You know, it's like it's like a lot of it was a showcase for like prop humor for for Joel's prop humor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and such. Yeah, it they, wasn't they... until after the first season that is that in the first season they after that so like the show got really polished. And they, they were firing on all the cylinders. That's why they're. That's why they were. Even even back when Comedy Central was rerunning the episodes, they Joel and, and them basically told him, "Please don't rerun the season one episodes." If you can. <laughs> no, seriously, they 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 they. they, they yeah, 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 yeah. It's like. And then during season six, Comedy Central stopped caring and started running them anyway. <laughs> it's like well, we're going to cancel the show next season. We don't care. I, I totally get the initial decision though, because like like. Like for example, like even even on like my small scale as a person creating videos online, like I have no desire to put any of my year one videos up on Channel Awesome at all. <laughs> like, <I> yeah, <laughs> no desire. Only if I have to. I think all the all the all the, all of the well known reviewers are like that. You know, it's like um, mm-hmm. you know, like 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 um, like Brad Jones and Sinusov. I've seen some of his earlier stuff, and compared to what he does now, it's it's what indifferent, much shorter yeah, yeah. and. and <laughs> and, totally and non-linear too. Yeah, very non-linear. Yeah. Also, you can you know understand him now. Mm-hmm. And there was one season he did entirely on the floor, if I recall. Yeah. Yeah. Which was he, shortly after he lost all his DVDs because yeah, he couldn't stole, afford yeah, a chair. Yeah, they got he got they got stolen from him. Yeah, mm-hmm. when he moved. <laughs> Poor dude. I, I I would lose my shit if I lost my collection. Holy crap. Oh, oh god, yeah. I've got like a. You know, at least they didn't take his Caligula. <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> he probably had that in like a safety deposit box. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck that. He's probably got like eight copies of that movie. <laughs> I think he, 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 think he says eight he's out of the ten collector's copies edition copies, <laughs> and they're all mine. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't oh, be surprised. Pro- I, I think he does have probably like multiple copies of that. I, I know probably. he. I I know he has one copy of it on Laserdisc. Nice. I think. I, I, nice. I remember correctly as on Laserdisc. I know he also has uh, the soundtrack on vinyl. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, hold on one second. Hello, dog. <laughs> oh, hi, doggy. Oh, hi, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> Could resist that. What's well, a story, huh? All right, let's continue. <laughs> and then James Franco sent me a cease and desist order. <laughs> um, that movie's going to be weird. Yeah, James is. Franco's uh, the disaster artist. Huh. I don't know. James Franco playing Tommy Wiseau. I don't know. The, I, I'm. I, I'd. Mm. I'd watch it. James Franco's been taking really weird roles lately, and yeah, he's he been kind of knocking out of the park in all of the weird ones. So who knows? Maybe he'll do it. He'll yeah. need like two hours of makeup to get that look right. He can, mm-hmm. be, he can be a good. He can. He can act good when he really puts in the effort. So if he does, this it might actually work. So we'll see. I don't know. I, w- I would have had uh, him cast as uh, Greg Cicero. I think mm. that would work a lot better. Mm. But his brother is playing Greg. So. Oh, really? His brother? Is, huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Oh, well, we'll just see how it goes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go home, okay? <laughs> um, and uh, going back to the MST reboot for a while... Uh, had you been cast again, who would you want to see as the host, out of curiosity? As uh, on, on a reboot? I have yeah. no idea who I'd get as the cast. I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, well, like, I do you guys got any cool suggestion, mm, suggestions? I, I can't uh, think of any off the top of my head. I remember there was a thing going around on Tumblr to get uh, Danny Pudi from uh, Community. Oh, that would be cool. That would be really mm. cool. Yeah, that, I, I can see that. something like that. Yeah. Uh, I've heard... Uh, um, what was his name? Uh, I can't remember his name. He has a new sitcom on uh, Fox. Can't remember. Uh, John Mulaney was mm. one. Um, okay. There were um, Kate Magucci. I heard once. I think that'd be really funny because I would like to have a female host. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be really cool. That'd be different. Uh, it'd be different in, in a good way. Mm-hmm. And that, I think that'd be very cool. I'd, I'd be down with that. You know, it's like it doesn't uh, matter to me as long as they're funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Danny Danny Pudi's probably uh, my top choice because he's really funny. 
He has great timing. Mm-hmm. I think he would knock it out of the park. Plus, you know, I can see him as like a janitor who just wandered onto the brand new satellite <laughs> of love and got trapped on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's kind of brilliant. I, nah, nice. He accidentally launched himself into space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Dear Joel, here is the story. Make me a writer, please. Mm-hmm. Signed, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> okay, so, um... I think, well, I think that about uh, wraps yeah, it up mm-hmm. for this. Uh, been, this was fun. All right, yeah, again, been, thank you yeah. very much for being on here. Yeah, it's been fun. No problem. Me. I'm sorry I'm not as knowledgeable at MST3K as some people are. <laughs> You're knowledgeable enough. Uh, yeah. We had... <laughs> We had Nash and Tara on once, and we were just like, so, uh, Tara, uh, w- uh, how'd you get into the show? It's like, I've never seen Mystery Science Theater. <laughs> well, I suppose, yeah, I suppose it could be worse. <laughs> like, <laughs> What's your favorite MST3K? Never seen it. Uh, who's your favorite host? Never seen, seen it. it. <laughs> but, yeah, so don't feel yeah, bad. It was, it, was, it, was a, it was a fun episode, though. Nice. Nothing, got, nothing really got accomplished. Sometimes we, those were the best episodes. We we just we basically just talked for an hour. It was great and uh, nice. Nash and Nash was there, uh, like I said, and he he talked to her about it. And uh, now that she has Netflix, she's gonna watch some episodes. I'm not gonna have her back on, and she's gonna you know talk about. Oh, nice! Season. You'll get a sequel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because we need listeners. Mm-hmm. We need that hook. So. <laughs> Uh, again, thank you very much for yes. uh, being on here. It was, yes, this is nope. really fun. Yeah, it was nice to no problem. Thank you for having me. And uh, again, guys, if you want to check out his stuff, it's on uh, That Guy with the Glasses. Just look for Horror Guru Blood Spotted Cinema. Mm-hmm. And he is the awesomeness. So, uh, again, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. No problem. Peace out. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Misty Cast. I'm Toby Mobius. I'm Justin Turner. And I'm the Horror Guru. We've come to the conclusion, dim bones, dim dry bones, sir. Mm Mm-hmm.